And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk book radio. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are. Together again on the radio. Joined later this hour by comedian Joe Rogan. Joe will be in a little while. In the meantime, uh, we are talking with you about... It started with a an article on the MSNBC website about emotional affairs. The fact that people are relying on members of the opposite sex, leaning on them for emotional support, telling them the innermost secrets of, of their relationships and what have you. So total strangers know everything about what's going on in your house. I mean, the question of whether or not it's a fair, that's an affair. That's one question. But how do you like the idea that some total stranger knows everything about what's going on inside your home? You don't know who it is. You don't know what they know. It's wrong. Right? 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. one 800 5800 Sandy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Sandy. I love this topic, Tom. Uh, I actually had a situation happen where a young lady offered me to her house to spend the weekend, and from the minute I walked in the door, she started cutting down her live-in boyfriend, who she had uh, two kids with, worse than a little boy. I mean, she treated this guy worse than you treat a kid these days. You can't even talk, yell at a kid these days. We walked in, first thing she says, do you want to watch TV? And I, you know, I'm the kind of person, you go to somebody's house, you do what they're doing, you don't say, well, no. So I said, okay, sure. And she turns around and looks at him and says, well, if somebody had paid the cable bill, you would. And that was Uh. the worst weekend of my life. I had a splitting headache. I had to sit through her yelling at him over the cell phone, telling him to bring my car back. And you better not put these nasty friends of yours smoking in my car. I mean, she treated this guy worse than a child. And I had to sit and hear through it and would tell me stories that really I shouldn't really be hearing. And I would try to turn it back to her and say, well, think back of why you loved him initially and, you know, what attracted you to him. You know, when you're angry, try to think of those reasons why you you were attracted to him in the first place and maybe you won't be so angry. What she wanted me to do is gang up and tell her she was right. And I think as women, what we do is we like to talk about people, not just our husbands. We like to talk about other females we don't like. That's just a habitual thing that females have. They want to hear a consensus, and they'll keep telling you the story until somebody tells them they're right so that they can go start a fight with a female or go home and raise pure holy hell. And I wasn't the one to tell her she was right. I put it back on her, and she kept text, kept messing, messaging me after that. I never called her back, inviting me to her house. I didn't want to walk in there ever again. Wow. And that's what I'm talking about. I mean, you 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 pretty much said what I'm thinking, which is uh, I don't see how anybody, uh, number one, would stay with somebody who does that to them. But number two, why would anyone want to hear this stuff? Well, I think as women, you know, like I said, we don't want to just confront somebody on our own. We have to have a gang or a clique. Uh, you see it at work. You see it in high school. You see it in grade school. They got to have a consensus clique to go and then confront that person and say, all these people agree with me, instead of 
sitting down and admitting where they were wrong and saying, I was wrong, honey, I'm sorry, this is where I take responsibility. And that woman he had before, I could tell why she argues a lot with her husband because she almost agreed with you, but she just had so much pride, she took, she immediately, she retracted what she was going to say. Imagine living with somebody like that. They won't stop until you say, yes, honey, and that's what they want. They want to emasculate a man, and they want the man to just kowtow and say, yes, honey. And if you're not that type of guy, you're going to rumble all night long until you just give up. Makes a lot of sense, Sandy. Thank you so much. Tom, can you take me out bong style and old style? I certainly can. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, um, you know, I have this girlfriend, you know, and uh, I don't, I really don't know what to do, you know, she, uh... Why do you have a girlfriend? Well, company, I guess. So you are lonely. Yeah, I'm pretty much lonely, You don't man. have any nope. friends. Nope, no friends, man. And why don't you have any friends? You have uh, psychiatric problems? No, nah, not really, you know, just... You're a 19-year-old guy. And most 19-year-old guys have a circle of friends. Why don't you? Well, pretty much the same reason uh, my girlfriend, you know, she wants to go out and... We're not, you know, we'll talk about her later. I'm talking about you. Uh, Why don't you have friends? Pretty much, I don't know. I, I've been betrayed by them, you know, just kind of... Maybe, maybe, you don't, maybe you don't know how to pick friends. Probably most likely because of that. So maybe you need to figure out how to do it, and then you need to have a network of friends. Yeah. Well, I don't know, man. It's just because of... The I real reason you have a girlfriend is because you've got no game, and you're expecting to get boned every night, and so therefore uh, this is a good deal for you. That's how you see it. Yeah. So you got no game, and you don't know how to meet girls. Yep. So well, the, I mean, I, I go out, you know, but... Oh, and you go out trying to meet other girls, too. Yeah, well, as a matter of fact. Now, yeah, isn't that know. great having a, you have a girlfriend, uh, but you're also out trying to meet other girls? Yep. That sounds I mean, like you know, true love so, to me, Oscar. Huh? Sounds like true love to me. Yeah, it sounds like it, you know, because, I mean, well, the thing I go out is, um, I go out and stuff, and, um, my girlfriend, she's like, oh, you can't, um, we can't hang out or anything, you know? Because I'm, I'm gonna kick it with my friends, so, might as well me go out, you know, try to find somebody else. Why don't, why don't you just have, uh, have some balls and break up with your girlfriend? Well, she's the one that gives it to me every night, you know, so... And just every, just every night, but she doesn't want to hang out. Or so you don't know like how that. to get sex from women? <laughs> Pretty much. Really? Yeah. Where's your father? Huh? Where is your father? What do you mean? Where is your father? Home. <laughs> I mean, is he married to your mother? Yeah, he is. Successfully. They, but I never see him argue or nothing like that. But don't you ever talk to him about uh, how to pick up chicks and stuff? Well, um, he's an old man, and I'm pretty sure because I guess how old they is married, he? They married at a young age. He how old married. is he? Huh? How old is he? Uh, around um, uh, sixty-two. He, but you just said they had you at a young age. Yeah, you're nineteen. Yep. Let's do some well, subtraction. 62 minus 19. How much is that? Uh, damn. Don't even know my, my adding or subtracting. You want me to tell you? Huh? Want me to tell you how much that might be? Yeah. 43. Uh, you just said your parents had you young. Do yeah, you think well, for, do you think much, for, you think forty three is a young age for a man to have a kid? Pretty much, yeah. You know, he had his fun with with my mom and everything. You know, so they, you they think? Out. Wait, so you think forty three is a young age to have a kid? Well, after down, I guess he settled down at that age. That's pretty young for me. Well, 
I, I'm glad to hear that, Oscar. But you say that, but you have a girlfriend at 19. Yep. <laughs> and according to Dean, the part you haven't told us yet is that she's a bitch. Yeah, she is. You know, she. Why do you have a girlfriend who's a bitch? <laughs> yep. No, no, yep is not the answer to my question. I'll ask the question again. Why do you have a girlfriend who's a bitch? Well, just like I said, uh, I don't even know why anymore. It's what do you mean you don't know? You control it. Yep. I guess Break so. up with her right now. Yeah, well, I guess that's what I'm about to do. Call it. A, that's it. Let's call her right now. Let's get this over with. Come on. Huh? We're going to get this over with right now. Let's call her right now. All right. We're going to call your girlfriend right now and get this done. All right. All right, hold on. All right. And don't you be a little pussy and hang up. Oh, no. no. You hear me? All right. We've got your phone number, Oscar, and I will hunt you down. So you tell me now if you're serious about calling your girlfriend. Oscar, he hung up. Dean's on the phone with him. All right, all right. We'll see. I'd love to. Uh, <laughs> love to get that uh, get that call going there. Lindsay on the Tom Liga show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Lindsay. You know what? I think Oscar's girlfriend must have beer flavored nipples because for him <laughs> to stay with a bitch, he's got to have some reason. I think her nipples dispense beer. They must because you know what the way from the way it sounds he doesn't know his ass from a hole in the ground and I really hope he calls back to comment on that. Um, but she probably caught him on the phone, so you know let's just be realistic here. Um, anybody that calls into a radio show and spells out what's going on in their life is having an emotional relationship with America. You're putting your life out there, and you know what I mean. <laughs> Poor Oscar, this poor kid, 19 years old, doesn't know how old his mom and dad were when they had kids, you know. And uh, it, Doesn't know how to subtract 60, uh, 62 minus 19. Well, he's just, he is drunk because of his lady's beer. <laughs> <laughs> beer nipples <laughs> will get <laughs> um, You know, I, I, feel, I feel bad because uh, as Americans, we're just, we hear so much of everybody else's drama and BS. It kind of, it, rule, it rules everybody's world, you know? So, I, I mean, I'm lucky my husband and I, we don't have drama, but we have it coming from everywhere else. So we get our own forms of entertainment listening to everybody else. And then when we're in the car, we get to call and listen to you tell people how it is. So uh, No doubt about that. Patricia, the Tom Liger Show, hello. What's up, Tom, baby? How you doing? I'm doing okay. I have a girlfriend, and she not only is having an emotional affair, she is having an emotional affair with the World Wide Web. She blogs about all the details of her and her husband and her children's lives on Blogger. Are you serious? I am absolutely 100% positive. In fact, a girlfriend of mine were actually, was actually talking about how that has alienated us from her. Because if you can demasculate your husband and talk about your stepson like he has a tail, a little boy whose life you've been in since he's two years old, now he, what would you say about us? And she says all kinds of things. She posts pictures initially, and, he, and her husband reads the blog. And then, of course, you have these cackling buzzard women that comment and co-sign. This woman's blog is not locked. It's not for private users. It's for everybody to see when she doesn't do something, uh, when he doesn't do something right or she's upset or frustrated. You know what would serve her right? You know what would serve her right if one of her friends sent an email to her husband and said, you know what, I think you're perfect. You know what? I know that's right. And you know, her husband's not a bad-looking guy. He makes money. And not, not to mention that time, she's a stay-at-home mom right now with two kids, one step, so one and stepson, including three, and she's pregnant. Her husband makes about ninety grand a year, and she's complaining and poking her mouth out and talking about what he does and does not do and how the stepson doesn't deserve this, that, and the other, and all of it. It ain't called the World Wide Web for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. And she's sitting up there. 
up doing all that, and I, I don't respect her for that. And she wonders why. She calls me secretive. No, I'm not secretive, Heather. Just don't tell you my business. Because if you're going to post your family's information online, who knows what you're telling your homies? Keep it pippin', Tom. Pippin' ain't easy, but somebody got to do it, and you the man. <laughs> Thank you, Patricia. Appreciate the call. I love it. one 800 500 Tom. Well, looks like Oscar's girlfriend's phone is going to voicemail. So we, we can't break up with her, Oscar, but are you going to break up with her t- later tonight? No, you're not, are you? Yep. Yeah, you're not. The night's done. That's it. You're not going to do it. <laughs> huh? You are not going to do it. Yes, I am. Got my balls up now and ready to do it. Really? Did you get them out of her purse? Huh? Did you get your balls out of her purse? Yep, I got them out of her purse. And ready to... Well, I mean, tonight I'm going to go out have fun and that's it. No more of her. All right, well, you call me back tomorrow and let me know how you made out. All right, man. Thanks a lot, man. I won't hold my breath. All right, uh, comedian Joe Rogan is coming up next. Don't go anywhere. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood and 1-800-5800-TOM. Now, earlier we were talking about Joe Rogan coming in here and... Uh, Somebody asked Joe, yeah, so we have Joey Diaz on the list. Like, no, no, it's just Joe Rogan. No, it's not. It's not. These guys, you take them as a package. That's the deal. We rolled together. I know. He called and he goes, you got, you're coming? And I thought you guys had me on the list. I came down. They're like, you're not on the list. But wherever you got three or more Puerto Ricans, I get in. You understand me? Because <laughs> I blow. That's the beauty of it. If they were Chinese, I'm back on Melrose looking for Joe Rogan somewhere. <laughs> but since they're Puerto Rican, Mexican, and new whatever the hell, the new, the new ones, you got to jump two fences. You know what I'm saying? They got Puerto Ricans the now. They got to jump two fences. It's so deep, deep, deep <laughs> into South up. America. <laughs> yeah, you gotta jump two of them and swim an ocean. And Aren't they trying them? to open that up now? There's uh, some. Po- I mean, it's a conspiracy theory in a lot of ways, but the <coughs> idea of uh, an American Union where they want to combine Mexico and Canada and the United States into one big super country. That's true, right? I mean, isn't that I've, like. What, I've heard people talk about well, that. Well, that guy was talking about it on CNN. How crazy would that be if they just opened the floodgates and anybody can go anywhere? Well, I got news for you. Boy, that's going to shake things up. Floodgates are already open. I yeah, but open, I mean, bro. are you kidding? If you made a, a, a North American Union where all the whole country could that be, cabayo, anybody could travel that, anywhere they want. That caballo left the Whoa. barn a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Is that possible that they could do that? <laughs> what about that dude that got that stuck in insane. Mexico? Because he didn't have a passport. Some white dude got stuck. He had to go to the embassy. Now they shoot you if you're white. If you're Mexican, they let you jump the fence. But really, that is the way it should that's be, way, right? I mean, we, we shouldn't be making people stay in certain parts of the dirt because that's where they were born. I mean, that's kind of goofy, isn't it? Shouldn't they be allowed to move around? Yeah, let's move them all to Hollywood. Well, we got to catch them up first, man. You know? Well, I just, <laughs> you guys got to catch up. We got to send you some stuff. Some I, shoes. You know? And, <laughs> you know? We, we got to help you out, man. I mean, there's, a, there's a big transition period between Los Angeles and Guatemala, and we got to, you know, aid you. I want to know who's parking cars in Guadalajara. <laughs> <laughs> who's left? Yeah. I'm well, curious. It, it is fascinating, though, to see how hard they, they, Do they have 12-year-olds doing that now because everybody else is here doing it? I don't get it. It's a hard-working people right there, man. That's right. It's amazing. Exactly. You know, I, when I was a kid, I was the only Cuban on the neighborhood. I was like the odd man out. Now, forget it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if, when I grew up, there was Chinese, couple Japanese kids, German, Irish. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Puerto Ricans were everywhere. Isn't it York. funny how people talk about like illegal immigration, but what would happen if all the Mexicans really just decided to leave L.A.? All the illegals. It would be chaos. Nobody would eat. This city would fall apart. Of course fall it would. Fall apart. That's Nobody right. would eat. I mean, really fall apart. That, what, that's true. Wasn't there like a movie about that? Didn't yes. they make a movie like A Day Without Mexicans? Yeah. Was that good? No. <laughs> but it was a good it was good the, idea. the thought behind it one is, of those movies it was a good idea and it resulted in all those uh, May Day demonstrations which was a good uh, thing I think but the movie wasn't that good uh, like a day without Chinese yeah, Mexicans yeah. and Japanese what would it be like <laughs> it'd be a hell of a long day you know what I'm saying it's just no sushi 
it's a very weird thing that we have countries still, you know. They were, the only reason why they still work is because people can't travel as quickly as we would like. You know, like planes, it takes a long time to get in a plane and fly to another, another country. If it was, like, really quick and anyone could do it, like you could have a personal transportation device like a plane, if they could ever figure that out, every country, it would fall apart. Because people would be everywhere. How would you keep track of anybody? You know, it's like this is an antiquated method of dealing with human beings. The idea of, like, separate boundaries in the dirt and over here is subject to one law and over here another. And you know, There's some pl crazy places in the world right now, like Dubai, where a dude got arrested because he had poppy seeds on his shirt from a roll that he ate at Heathrow Airport. They threw him in a cage for that. That's scary. Don't man. they always say, oh, Dubai, it's the... Uh... Their drug laws are beyond crazy. If you get caught with drugs in your system, like, you don't even have to have drugs on you. They make you do a urine che check if uh, there's anything wrong. And if they, they have these, you know, like, really detailed analysis of your urine, and they can find out if you've ever had any drugs, like, within the last, like, month or so. And if you do, you're you're under arrest. You know, and I, they can I, lock I, you in a cage. Here's what I don't get. If you want to go to a casino, why don't you go to Vegas? Why, yeah. What are you going to Dubai for? Yeah. Why would you want to go to Dubai? I'm scared to go to 7-Eleven anymore. <laughs> I go to 7-Eleven, I can't get three numbers to pick. You know what I'm saying? You go on there 2 19 in two hours to get three numbers. I want to go to Dubai and gamble. They'll definitely chisel me. Dangerous Listen, out. in California right now, they made $100 million last year in taxes on weed. I ain't going nowhere no more. No more. I ain't going to Hong Kong. I had big dreams for a long time. I'm going to Australia. No more. There's nowhere to go. Right here. Purple Dirkle. Some cookies, and that's it. I'll be in Hong yeah, Kong in my own mind. None of that in I'm Dubai. I'm not going to Dubai and submit to a P test <laughs> at the airport because my eye is red because I rubbed it and I got pink eye. There's no need. First off, it's 18 hours on a plane. Why? Unless you're picking up an envelope and you're killing somebody, why would you do that? Why would you 18 hours to do what? What am I going to see there? Like you know see? what? It is fascinating though because that whole the whole Middle East is really the cradle of civilization. Oh, it is. That's Absolutely. where civilization started. That's why they have these crazy laws. These no dancing laws, and you know you go with the wrong religion, and the family will stone their daughter to death and put it on the internet. I mean, they're 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 old school humanity, and that's what's fascinating about it. It's like you know what it is. It's like the people in the Middle East are like the townies of the world. <laughs> because that's where... It's true, because that's where civilization was created. Sumer is the oldest civilization we know about, it was, and it's in Iraq. That's where Iraq is. And that's where the first written language, first evidence of the wheel, first mathematics, first astronomy, all that came from Sumer. And that's where Iraq is. And look how screwed up it is today. Literally, they're the, it's the townies of the world. It's just like when you go back to your high school, the same douchebags that are hanging around the auto shop parking lot doing donuts, you know, and they're 23. Three. That's that's Iraq. That's what the Middle East is. They're the forty-year-old grandparents now. And I think you know that that that's our next step of evolution is the Westernization. I mean, not even Westernization, but you know, some some sort of improvement across the board. All because we're so much communication now that we, countries it just doesn't work anymore. You know, if we can just figure out a way to travel as quickly back and forth, then we can abolish everything. And then it's just it's all just cool people, douchebags. <laughs> and you know you don't have to have like countries and you know morons a-holes and people you can hang out with that's it that's the three categories you know what would the world be like without douchebags it would probably be less funny for sure i mean you i don't know? know how we'd run the radio business without douchebags <laughs> i'll tell you right now <laughs> It's true, right? Well, if there was ever a business filled with douchebags, it's the radio business. The National Association of Broadcasters. It's an alphabetical list of douchebags. It's amazing. <laughs> Comedy, too. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It is true. There's a, a certain amount of douchebag that you have to have to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> there's a slight amount you gotta ha you gotta be the guy who opens his mouth first and sometimes that's not a good idea <laughs> sometimes it's in poor taste it's all meant you know for the right it's all meant to make everybody laugh but sometimes it just that happens to me all the time bro. oh I don't believe it I'm always that guy <laughs> and I feel bad about it the other day some girl double parked in the back and I'm upstairs like why should I say something to her but I gotta say something to her you know what I'm saying but then again you say something then you raise your hand last week at the weed store some guy cut in front of me you know and I say and the guy goes to me well isn't weed supposed to make you nicer no I thought weed's supposed to give you manners you know what I'm saying you little yeah and I can't curse <laughs> but it's just so weird how I, 
cutting in front of Joey at the weed store is like pulling food out of a oh, pit bull's mouth. Oh, especially when I'm in a rush. Listen, the weed, the, the weed store opens, that, out, dude, it it. opens at 11. I'm there at 11 03 of the attendance. You know what I'm saying? That guy cut in front of you. Wow. Yeah, West Hollywood. He must have really been high. In West Hollywood, you got the Russians always pushing ahead of you. That's the way that is. No, right? but they, you know what? Yeah, like when you're at the counter, they're asking questions. Hey, what's on sale? Bro, I'm here first. Ask you questions when it's your turn. Russians you know are some aggressive people, man. Oh, yeah. Trader Joe's. You want to see Russian Santa Monica Boulevard? Trader Joe's. <laughs> the toilet paper aisle? You they know go what? bananas. Wait, they're not going to run out of bread, okay? There's going to be bread for everybody. Don't yeah. be running over my foot with your wagon, okay? Stop it. Yeah, it is fascinating to see how vastly different people are from different parts of the world, you know? All converging together in exactly. Los Angeles. In West Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> All That's here exactly for the right. dream. That's exactly right. We'll take a break. And are you guys are you guys playing together this uh, oh, this weekend? Hell we'll yeah. See okay, good. Together this weekend and together House of Blues um July fourth. So it's uh, it's Saturday night at the Melrose Improv. Two shows in Hollywood. Two shows. What time? Eight and ten, something like that. Just get there. <laughs> eight and ten. You know, I mean, people always, what time? I don't know, about eight, about ten. Eight and there. ten. Joey they will be there at nine and eleven. Anyway. Get there about seven, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Get a burrito or something. That's well, right. You know, have a few cocktails. Have a few cocktails. Enjoy the man. moment. It's Saturday night. What are you going to do? Strap it in. <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll come back with Joe Rogan and Joey Diaz and your calls. Like this. Tom Like it. From Hollywood, I'm Tom Likas here at 1-800-5800-TOM. Joe Rogan and Joey Diaz are here. They'll be at the Melrose Improv in Hollywood this Saturday, June 28th. You can call the Improv at 323-651-2583. And then uh, next Friday, 4th of July, House of Blues, Las Vegas. And uh, two shows here, too. Is that the deal? No. House of Blues, just one. One Bang show. Out. One Bang out one big show. Big, groovy one. That's it. Done. And that uh, number there at the House of Blues in Las Vegas is 702-632-7600. Take some calls here. You got a lot of them. Sweet. Let's see. 1-800-5800-TOM. Colby on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Colby. Hey, uh, I was just calling to see how high Joe is. I feel like I'm getting a contact high over here. Listen to him. Dude, do you feel it? Man. Do you I feel it, dude? Good. Does it does it help your day a little bit? Yeah, it does. I, I was wondering if you're hitting the kush or, or what's going on over there. Um, this is a sativa. I think it's called uh, green crack. So it's got to be good for you. Everything's just fascinating over there in the studio. I was just curious how I, uh, everybody was over there. Yes. K-U-S-H. And K-U-S-H-H-D. If you don't have anything serious to do, why not be high? That's yeah, what I say. Absolutely. You know, man, it's not like you. I'm, you know, garden babies. Are you guys you know? coming up to Portland anytime soon? Um, no, the, we got a Seattle date in, um, uh, I think, August, in late August. And that's the ne the closest I'm going to be to Portland for a while. You don't, you don't want to come here and screw, I do. Our, uh, I just, screw our heavy chicks? Screw your heavy <laughs> chicks? How heavy are they, dude? Uh, Talk well, to me. I'm Is it rough up there? It's Portland. I, 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 got a, I got a Portland 10. I'm married to a Portland 10, but they're, you know. A Portland 10? I like how you qualify. That's an LA 5. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know if I'd go that low, Tom. But. <laughs> it's his wife, Tom. You already have. Oh, how dare you, Well, sir. he knows it. <laughs> no, no. I wouldn't give, I wouldn't, I'd put her way higher than a five, brother. Way, well, way higher than a five? I mean, way higher than an L.A. five? Uh, uh, absolutely, yes. Well, well, it's his wife, you know. Yeah. How tall is Good she? Good for you, sticking up for uh, your wife, she, buddy. She's 5'2", 110. She's got a set of uh, fake double Ds. There you go. Ball. Let's see a picture. Oh, yeah, that send sounds that good. Photo in. What's that? Send that photo in. <laughs> so do you have to live, do you hate living up in Portland, dude? Or do you no, like actually, it? It's not bad, man. You know, we got fresh air and, you know, nice weather. We got skiing and all that. So, you know, I'm, I'm okay with Portland. And and more strip clubs per capita than any city in America, including Absolutely. Dallas. Really? Absolutely. More than Dallas? Yes. Yeah. That's good. Uh, dice on do every corner up here. Yeah, and Texas you, is crazy with strip clubs. Yeah, the only way to see hot chicks in Portland is to go to a strip club. <laughs> there you go. I got stuck in Grant's past. It was weird because the DJ was the cook, was the stripper, was the waitress. <laughs> it was classic. I never seen anything like that in all my life. <laughs> Grant's past. That was a great place, man. Yep. Many all right, well, ago. you guys have a good day, man. Tom, right, you too, brother. Out with the bong hit. I'll take you out with a bong hit, Colby. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. 
Portland. I don't like the sound effects and everything. <laughs> CBS is king. Can we all just get a bong? Yes, 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. This is Craig on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? It's going great, Craig. I wanted to see about Joe clarifying his idea of making the world into one big country. Well, it's impossible. I'm just talking nonsense because I'm stoned, dude. Come on. <laughs> Are you really calling in to try to argue this point? Well, no, hey, no, listen, dude, this is not a political talk show. I'm baked and I'm talking about the world all coming together in some sort of utopian society that could never possibly exist because we're a bunch of crazy wild chimps. <laughs> but yeah, don't I, try I, to like make sense out of it, bad, dude. I'm just called to correct you on what globalization <laughs> is really about. The concept behind it seems to be misunderstood, and I'd like to clarify. Uh, it, it just it was funny dude. To me how put you the phone that. down and, and smoke a joint, Craig. You're on your way put home. Your smoke phone that down and smoke Who cares a joint, about the cop Craig. and no insurance? You got Geico, <laughs> Craig. You're talking Run nonsense. <laughs> Everybody, everybody got Geico. You, Nobody wants of, to smoke and drive. Of no course, more. what I'm saying makes you see no the cavemen? sense. Dude. How did they got like that? Smoke and drive. <laughs> Put on Black Sabbath and keep puffing, Jack. Stop, get a slice of pizza. <laughs> Is that isn't that like people's favorite thing to do? Correct other people. That's one, like one of people's favorite things to do. That, that, that's what they like doing in talk radio. They're like, uh, Ira, yeah, I yeah. want to correct something you said about the train from the walk yeah. into Chicago. Oh, <laughs> God. I listen to Patriot Talk Radio all the time oh, on Sirius. Oh, my just, God. Just to freak out that there's people like that out there. I just drive around listening to retards <laughs> talk about the you know, the lefties and what they're doing to ruin the government oh, yeah. and ruin support our troops and we're winning this war and oh, you crazy... <laughs> Oh. I I I bought a house uh, recently up in uh, Santa Barbara County, and I was listening to AM radio there, which is one conservative talk radio station after another. Oh, and I of tune course, in, everybody's I, got money up there. No, but you got to hear. It. I mean, I, I tune to this one station, and there's a guy who calls in, and he's like, uh, "Yeah, uh, I just went to uh, Home Depot. I've been stocking up on the incandescent light bulbs." Because the liberals want to take away our incandescent light bulbs, and in 2011, they're not going to be anymore. So I'm, I'm stocking them up in my garage. I got pallets of incandescent oh light God. bulbs. They're not. Gonna, they're taking away our light bulbs for God's sake. Oh, <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> it's such a uh, it's such a good trick, <laughs> you know, the whole left versus right, you know, liberals versus conservatives, because people will just automatically pick a team. At one point in their life, thinking for themselves is too difficult, so they just jump onto a predetermined pattern of behavior. Whether it's I'm gonna I'll be I'm a liberal, and as uh, as a person who's a liberal, I think this, or as a no, no one looks at it as a human being anymore. You know, it's crazy. A, it's a real problem. Let's say hello here to Justin on the Tom Likas Show. We're here with Joe Rogan and Joey Diaz. Hello. Joe Rogan. Yo, what's up, dude? What's up, big buddy? What's going hey, on, man? Talking about Kimbo. Kimbo. Kimbo Slice, what you think about Kimbo? I like him, man. I think Kimbo's exciting, you know? People yeah, want to I, talk a lot of I, trash. I, the dude's very humble. He trains very hard. He sought out some of the best mixed martial arts trainers in the world. He trains with Boss Rutten, and he works real hard, man. And you know what? He's exciting. And, uh, you know, a lot of people think that, you know, he's not a, a top-tier fighter. Well, he's only been doing it like a couple of years, and I think everybody's putting too much pressure on him. I think as long as they don't rush him and as long as they bring him up correctly, the dude has a ton of heart. He trains really hard, and he's very serious about it. And I met him. And he's cool as hell. He's a really cool dude. And I wish that dude the best. I like that guy. Justin, thank you for the call. Let's say hi here to Abdul on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Father. How are you? Son, I'm doing great. Hey, I was curious. So he's talking about uh, opening borders and whatnot. But I've heard that the FDIC has devalued the dollar so much so that under NAFTA they could create what's called the Ameri, Ameri Euro in order Amero. to compete with the Euro. Yeah, well, I don't know if it's to compete with it. I mean, the, the real conspiracy theory, if you want to go crazy Alex Jones on the whole situation, <laughs> is that they're trying to make one world government, one world banking system control us all with microchips. And that's uh, a multi-stage process of enslaving human beings to, <laughs> you know, these this one master race. And then once they get that under play, then what they're going to do is kill off most of the population because there's too many of us. 
you know, for all the resources, and then they'll control everything. And the rest of us are going to be in a room with fluorescent yeah. light bulbs. <laughs> Incandescent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, who knows? Well. Uh, Abdul, thank you. Uh, Eric on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. How's everyone doing? What's up, dude? Hey, what's up? Uh, yeah, you guys were just talking about Alex Jones. That's kind of funny because I was going to ask uh, Joe if he still talks to him. Because I saw that video you guys did on the Internet of you getting stoned or whatever, putting on the, <laughs> the bush mask or whatever. It's pretty cool. I was just wondering, you know, what you thought about him and if do you still talk to him. Yeah, I just did his radio show like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, oh, I, yeah? I love that dude. I think he's uh, he's a, he's wacky, you know, but I think yeah. that's pretty obvious. But you know what? He, he does expose a lot of things that are absolutely 100% true. I don't know how much, what percentage of it is true. You know, and the problem is the percentage that's not. <laughs> that's, that that, that kind of gets things a little bit cloudy. It's almost like his his own worst disinformation agent. But you know, he's a pretty courageous courageous dude. He exposes a lot of things. The the the, the video that he did that was one of the craziest was I think it was 911 police state where he exposed the the what they did with the. Um, in Seattle, what was that big trade with WTO, World Trade right. Organization? Well, they had uh, protests up there, peaceful protests. And what they believe are, were government agents came in with like ski masks on and started smashing windows and kicking things over. And they were with the protesters, but they were doing all this violent stuff. So that caused the police to come in. And he maps this all out and with all, all with news videos and he shows it. And it's like, well, he's right about this. Like the, that's, that's what happened. I mean, those people got away. They, they were never arrested. They got away with the whole situation and they literally closed down protesting. People couldn't even have like a, a, a badge on their, their, book bag when they were walking through this corridor where the police were protecting because if the bag on the book bag had like a little pin on it that said you know WTO with a red slash through it they were telling people on video you have to take that off you're not allowed to protest that's the craziest thing ever and that was yeah. in this country and it really did happen and he exposed it and it's v v very spooky to think that uh, we're that easily fooled but you know a, a guy like Alex Jones the, the real problem is he he's he's right about a lot of stuff, but I think he draws some conclusions that aren't necessarily based on facts, and he states them as a fact, and I think that's where it's a problem. Thanks, Eric. We're here with Joe Rogan and Joey Diaz at one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom Edward, hello, hello, hello. Are uh, you busy over there, Edward? Sorry to interrupt. No, I'm not busy at all. Sorry. Um, I was actually calling to, to congratulate Joe Rogan on his work with the uh, USC and also to tell you, Tom, that you have a great show. Thanks, dude. But, uh, Joe, I, this I is usually where a crank call begins when it starts with that. Well, uh, I'll just take the good with the bad. Yeah. <laughs> just so you know. Definitely not a crank call. Yeah, I just want to call and say, I love your show. I listen all the time. Joe, you're a great comedian. Joey, love you. Think you're great. Now, uh, let me ask you a question. Do you have Prince Albert in the can? <laughs> No, no, definitely not. I was actually called to congratulate him on his YouTube work more than anything. I definitely um, am not a fan of Carlos Mencia, and I definitely want to congratulate you for how you confronted him on all, all of his, his antics uh, of stealing jokes and whatnot. I know you're a longtime uh, stand-up comedian yourself. And I was just curious, as though, you know, what do you think is causing his success? I mean, people obviously know that he's stealing people's jokes. That wasn't a, a small-time news story. Why is he still getting success? There's a lot of people that don't care. It doesn't bother them. You know, I mean, some people just like to be entertained. They don't care where it came from. Some people don't mind people that steal things, you know? It's all right, dude. Everyone finds their own level of success emotionally, spiritually, you know, financially. You got you to gotta figure out what's most important to you. And if you're the type of person that the financial aspect of it is the most important thing above all and beyond, you're going to have a miserable life no matter how successful you are. And uh, that's where people who don't have artistic integrity find themselves. So that's what I think about. Edward, thanks for the call. The Carlos Mencia situation. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get at least one of those calls every time. Yeah, always, right? Standard. Joe Rogan, Joey Diaz, this Saturday at the Improv in Hollywood on Melrose Avenue. 651-2583 is the number there. 323 area code. House of Blues, Las Vegas, Friday the 4th of July. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, man. brother. The Tom Likas Show. 97.1 Free FM. SoCal's FM Talk Station.